Hey everybody, welcome back to Sophisticates by Mary. If you're new here, welcome. For this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how I made this beaded fondant vertical ruffle cake. Now you can do this with the roses on top, any kind of flowers you want, or without. I think this one kind of stands out on its own without it, but if you want an extra little touch, go ahead and add some flowers. So if this sounds interesting to you, please stick around. We'll get to it right after the intro. So typically I start with details on a cake that need to set up for a while. But since the decorations on this cake only need maybe about 15, 20 minutes to set up before I apply them to the cake, I just went ahead and started with assembling the cake. So I had two tiers for this cake and this one was a five inch, no, a six inch on top and a seven inch on the bottom. And I did three layers of cake on each tier. Now I started with a pre-cream, pre-crumb coated cake. Um, if you want to see how I do that, I have lots of examples of how I fill and crumb coat my cakes on other videos. But this one already had a lot of things to show you and it would have added up to a very long video. So I went ahead and started with the cakes already prepped and just ready to be frosted and decorated. So I'm using my American buttercream for this cake and I will attach a link on my recipe on how I do this this buttercream. It's a wonderful buttercream. It's bubble free if you do it the right way and it works very well. So I am just going ahead and applying a layer of buttercream with my offset spatula and then removing the excess. Now go ahead and pull that buttercream on the top lip in towards the center and I wanted to make sure this was extra level on top since I'm going to be putting some fondant on it so I just went ahead and smoothed out that top one more time. And here we have my fondant and I put plenty of cornstarch on my work surface so that the fondant will not stick. For this one I used a hybrid fondant. It is part marshmallow fondant and part satin ice is what I used for this one. I had some of each so I just combined the two and they work just fine. It kind of just extends the life of the or the how far this fondant will go. Now go ahead and roll it out to about a quarter of an inch thick, eight, eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch thick, and then transfer it over to your cake. I had set the cake in the refrigerator for about 20 minutes before putting the fondant on, and then I just put a very thin layer of shortening on the surface of the cake. Just with my hands, you can use a brush if you prefer, just to get the fondant to stick. Now remove that excess around the bottom before transferring it up onto your turntable. Just makes it a little easier to lift it and there's less weight on that fondant so that you have less chances of it tearing. Now I just like to smooth right away with a wad of fondant. I find that that works really well to get it smoother than these paddles can do sometimes because it conforms to the contour of the side of the cake. But I do use a combination of both techniques and here I am pushing the two um, smoothers together on the corner to create a crisp corner and then I use some flexi smoothers as well because I want to get that really crisp. Now I'm going to do the same thing for my top tier and what you see me doing there is I'm using a needle and popping air bubbles. And then I go back with my smoother and just kind of go over the surface and blend those little tiny holes in. And do the same thing, transferring your fondant onto your cake. You can use a rolling pin transfer method if you prefer. I'm just so used to using my hands that I just go ahead and lift it up that way, but whatever works better for you. Smooth it out again and use your smoothers and your flexi smoothers to get the crisp corner and pop any air bubbles that you might find as you are smoothing because you're going to push that air together as you're smoothing it and you're going to have some air bubbles more than likely. So just go ahead and pop it the same as you did on your surface when you were rolling it out initially. Now I'm using bubble tea straws. I'm using five of them. Typically I use five. If your tear is probably a, a 10 inch or larger, I would use a few more. But I find that if you space them out well, then five is pretty standardly okay. Now just lift your second tier, your top tier on top. It had been setting up in the fridge so that it was firm to the touch so I could just lift it up. 
And now I'm gonna make the ruffles. And I am just using fondant mixed with a little bit of Tylos. I don't wanna use too much Tylos because I don't want those, font, those ruffles to crack as I'm working with them. But I also want them to set up fairly firm or fairly quickly. So I would say I probably used about a half a teaspoon with that amount of fondant. Now roll it out fairly, fairly thin, probably a little less than an eighth of an inch. Kind of as thin as you can get it really. And I am using my strip cutter to cut long strips of the fondant out of that because I want them to be the same width. Remove your excess and then I'm going to cut these down into more manageable sizes. And I'm using my um, saran wrap to cover up the pieces I'm not working with so that they don't dry out before I can get to them. Now I'm just accordion folding this fondant. Don't worry about adding any water to get the um, ruffles to stick to themselves quite yet. Go ahead and fold it into your shape. Use your fingers. Your hands are your best tools. Use your fingers to fold it into the accordion shape. And then go back in with a paintbrush and some water just where the fondant touches to make sure that they stick together. And go ahead and do the same thing for two more rows of fondant. And when you're cutting these strips, just guesstimate that they're going to need to be probably twice as long as the tier is tall because when you are you know doing your your folds you are losing length so it's about half as long as it was to begin with now just make sure that you're sticking putting some water in between the rows of ruffles so that they stick to each other and set them aside like i said for about 15 20 minutes to set up before you even bother trying to transfer it because they could fall apart in the transfer <laughs> if you don't give them just a, just a little bit to set up. And then I did not do this on that bottom tier and I wished I had. I had put it on the bottom tier first and then added some rolled up pieces of paper towel to help the ruffles keep their shape on the actual cake. But for the top tier, I went ahead and did it on the countertop on the surface before I transferred it onto the cake. I find that that actually worked a little bit better. But if you prefer and feel a little bit better about it, a little bit more cautious to do one row at a time and then put it on the cake and then do the next row of ruffles and then apply that on top of your first row, that's fine. You can do that too. Just start with your ruffles that are in the back and then add on to the front. Now, after it's had a little while to set up, I would say a good, mm, I put it in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes. You can go ahead and remove those toothpicks and pieces of, of uh, paper towel. Now here's, I'll show you how I put those toothpicks in here. I just kind of put the toothpick underneath the paper towel wad because otherwise a toothpick is small enough that it can actually crack your fondant. It can kind of pull it down and you don't want that to happen. So you have that little buffer of the paper towel on top of the toothpick. And just stick them right into the cake. Hidden, but into the cake. Those little holes are not gonna create dryness to your cake as a whole, I promise, they will not. Now I wanted these ruffles to stick out uh, up a little bit over the top, so I just went ahead and, and kind of readjusted those a little bit. I'm just reassuring myself that they are stuck onto the cake firmly enough by just putting a little bit more, a little bit more water right there on that crease. Now here I'm making my beaded strips. Now there are silicone molds and I do have one that give you the basically the same look without having to go to the work of using the, the dragees the pearls and that's fine too but I wanted three different colors and this is a little harder to do with those silicone molds and I wanted to show you how you can do it if you don't want to purchase those molds so just go ahead and roll out your fondant and cut it to the width that you want use your sprinkles dragees whatever you want to use I mixed some that I already had on hand because I wanted gold white and a pale pink and I didn't show it, but just brush the surface of the fondant strip with some water. That's all you need is some water. And then go ahead and just stick your dragees onto it. This can be a little fiddly. This can take a little time because, you know, dragees, they like to roll. They like to try to run away. You got to catch them, show them who's boss, stick them on there. Put a little pressure on them once you get them on there just to make sure that they're stuck. And here I am just going ahead and making sure that 
the edge where the strips of beads are going to go is level and smooth from top to bottom. That is just a clay cutting tool that I like to use for fondant. Um, I have never used it on clay, only fondant. I'm just adding some water onto the fondant before I stick the beaded strips on. And you can let those set up for another 15-20 minutes as well, just so they're easier to move. And just cut off your excess off of the top and the bottom. Some dragées will fly off, they'll come off, that's okay. There's enough of them, you're really not going to notice those missing. You're just going to have to sweep later. Trust me, you're going to have to sweep. <laughs> and just remove all the um, supports, your paper towels and your toothpicks. Now, if you're going to add flowers, I'm showing you here how I use some floral tape. You pull off a piece, pull it to activate the stickiness, and then just wrap it around your stem and make sure that you are getting the end, the cut end of your flower so that there's no seepage into your cake. That is kind of the whole purpose of doing this. Make sure you have that, that end closed off really well. And just wrap it against itself. It will stick to itself. Now, if you feel better about it, you can go ahead and stick a straw into your cake before you put your flour in. That's fine. I just find that the floral tape alone is enough. That could cause some debate. Other people disagree. You kind of got to do what, what you feel best with. I've never had anybody complain about it, ever. And it's always worked just fine. And plus, I find with you use straws that you can't really control the height of the flour. They just kind of fall into the straw. And I want some varying heights in those flowers. So I just, I just, sorry, I just prefer to just go ahead and use floral tape. There is a buffer there between the cake and the flower. It's fine. And just arrange those however is visually appealing to you. And there it is. I think she's gorgeous. And I hope that you learned something from this tutorial. And that you found something that you can use. Now, if you did like it, please like, subscribe, share, comment, do all the things. I'm finding that this time of the year, views are going down a little bit. And to get the algorithm going again, guys, please like, subscribe, share, comment, hit the notification bell. I would appreciate it. And I thank you for watching. We'll catch you next time. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.